Welcome to the Power in Motion podcast, the show for women who want to develop a kinder relationship with their body so you can feel healthy, happy, and confident without restricting food, doing torturous exercise, or constantly worrying about the number on the scale. I'm your host, Kim Hagel, size inclusive fitness specialist and certified non diet health and life coach specializing in body image. This podcast is here to provide weight neutral, health at every size aligned information and coaching on sustainable habits and mindset shifts so you can feel your very best in the body you have right now. Let's lace up our runners and go for a walk while we chat. Hey, friend. Welcome back to the Power in Motion podcast. Now, before we get into this week's episode, which is a juicy one, if I do say so myself, I want to extend a special invitation to you. If you love what you're hearing here on the show, then you have got to get on my email list because that's where we take what you learn here to the next level. Embrace Your Radiance is my weekly email series that helps women overcome feeling limited by their body. Each week, you receive exclusive coaching tips to help you feel healthy, happy, and confident no matter what the scale says. And as a subscriber, you're also the first to hear about all of my free and paid offers. And spoiler alert, there is a big one coming out at the end of this month, a very special low-ticket, low-commitment offer to help you navigate the holidays. And the only way to hear about it is if you're on my email list. Emails come out at a minimum every Sunday at 7 p.m. And you can subscribe by clicking the link in my show notes or visit radiantvitality.ca slash email. Okay, so let's talk about this week's episode. We are joined for a juicy interview with my friend and coach colleague, Randy Cox, who's a former Weight Watchers coach turned non-diet, living her fullest life without restriction. She's on a mission to help other moms get the heck out of diet culture get comfortable in their skin, and create body confidence so they can be the best damn role model for her kids and live their own badass confident life. Um, Did I mention this is going to be a spicy interview? (laughs) If you have children, you might want to pop the earbuds in. Now, having worked for Weight Watchers for 10 years, Randy has a lot to say about her experience with dieting and why she chose to embrace the non-diet life. This is a really inspiring and vulnerable conversation where we dig into all that Randy lost during her dieting days and all that she's gained on the other side. It's about a whole lot more than weight, my friends. So I hope that you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. And after you listen, you're going to want to go and follow Randy and listen to her podcast as well, which is all linked up in the show notes for you. So let's dive in. Hey, Randy. Welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you here tonight. Huh? Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. I can't wait to chat with you and spill some tea all about Wig Watchers and yeah. yeah, and hear how you made that journey from a Weight Watchers coach to a non-diet coach. So why don't you just kick us off by starting a little bit about you and how you came to be doing this work that you're doing now? Yeah. Um, so like you mentioned, I am from the Weight Watchers world. Uh, I joined Weight Watchers just like everybody else does with hopes of being the healthiest, thinnest version of myself. Um, and I joined because I wanted to lose weight. And I think in the back of my head, it was health. But really, I was like, saw some pictures of myself and I was like, I don't like how these look. I want to I want to be different looking. So I went to Weight Watchers, joined. Um, and I was there for about a year and lost weight on the program. Uh, and then they asked me if I wanted to work with them. And I was like, yes, I can be part of this great thing. I can help other women. I'm here for it. Uh, so I ended up being a weight loss coach with them and coached other women to lose weight. And slowly over time, like I worked for them for about 10 years. So we say very slowly over time, I started to just notice some things that were jiving with who I was and like what I wanted to live life like. Uh, And I remember being at one meeting room and one of the members was like, I haven't eaten at a restaurant for over a year. And this was her win and her celebration. And everyone started clapping and cheering. And I was like, 
Oh my God. I have also not eaten at a restaurant because I was so scared to eat without knowing the point value of everything and how I counted in my daily allotment and how much working out I'd have to do. Like restaurants were so much work and so stressful. And so I was like, I thought I was the only one, but I'm putting this on my members as well. So that like didn't sit right. And then I was like, why are we, why are we cheering for someone not going out to a restaurant? And think of all the birthdays and the anniversaries and just date nights or just girls nights like so much different things were missing in her life because of that and that was kind of the first thing and slowly I was like I I just want women to love their bodies like I just want us to feel comfortable I just want us to be confident and do we need the scale for that and so I slowly started to adapt my own coaching in my Weight Watchers meeting room like don't tell them I did this (laughs) that wouldn't connect up on me (laughs) But ultimately, still, everybody had to weigh themselves. Uh, so people would come into the meeting room and be like, oh, my gosh, I did this fantastic hike. I tried this new food. I had such a great week. I played with my kids. And they would step on the scale and the number would not be what they thought in their mind. And it would just be defeating. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure so many people are like, mm-hmm, yeah, me too. <laughs> right? Like, yep, been there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I... I just felt so icky being a part of this. And I stopped telling people what I did for work. I didn't want people to know what I did because it just, it didn't jive with me anymore. And then the moment it all kind of came crashing down and together was when I found out I was pregnant. Um, And so I found out I was pregnant. And the first thing that came to my mind was, oh my gosh, I need to start eating because I wasn't eating enough food for myself, let alone this little human I was growing. So started eating food and ate food. My doctor wasn't happy with it because I'd gained weight. And I was like, get big surprise. Like I'm eating food. Um, And then slowly it was like, during my pregnancy, I kept telling myself, I don't ever want my kid to feel like she needs to go to a Weight Watchers meeting room. And I don't want my kid to be that like, feel that shame in her body and I don't want my kid to ever think her body is wrong and it was just like a big slap across the face like holy shit if I'm so protective of her why don't I have this attitude for myself why don't I have this compassion and self-care for my own body um and so I said okay I'm not going back to Weight Watchers like I'm done and but it's so scary unknown like If you're done dieting, what the heck do we do? Uh, I joke that I was the poster child for Weight Watchers. Like legitimately, this face was on their posters years ago. So it was scary. I had no idea how to be healthy. Like if I'm not constantly pursuing weight loss, what does that look like? Uh, And I started following a few Instagram accounts like many Kim's. And so I just started to like understand that there's another way to live. Uh, and I then devoured every book I could, took some courses, got some coaching, and really learned that my body is just a body. It it's, doesn't matter if it's big or small or good or bad. Like, it's just here for me to have fun. Um, and so my whole outlook on life did a 180 switch. And I was like, how can I have the most joy? How can I bring the most pleasure into my life? What can I do? That's going to be fun. And I mean, I talk like it's all sunshine and rainbows, but there's still uncomfortable parts of it. But really, like I've learned to trust myself and I've had so much more confidence in all those moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Such a beautiful story. And I love how, you know, it took being pregnant and having that wake up call for you to see like, you know, why is it? okay for me to be depriving of myself like I heard you talking about your members and how you were sad for them like not living their best life not going to restaurants not doing the things that they would enjoy and like you were okay with doing that for yourself but you were sad for them right? so yeah like, having this other person for you to realize like hey I deserve all that same joy and self-care too yeah yeah exactly and like I said it was just like a slap in the face Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of things I want to talk about, but let's start with, with your child. What's it like now raising a child in a world that's just run by diet culture? Yeah. Wild, crazy. <laughs> um, 
she's my biggest teacher, honestly, through a lot of this, because we're not born hating our bodies. We're not born into that. I mean, yeah, we're born into a diet culture world, but we're not born with those thoughts in our head. And so it's so interesting to watch her vision on things and her view on things and like her body is literally there to be like cool I can climb up this playground I can go down this line I can run fast down this road and so it's really quite fascinating to watch that and even like her food choices were very open and there's no good food or bad food and just watching her like the other day she had a salad and gummy worms was her breakfast like that's what she was craving that's what she wanted so it's just like so interesting to see that part of her Um, But on the flip side of parenting that, like, I, I like to be naive and think I can shelter her and keep her (laughs) diet free forever. But I know that's not realistic. Um, Actually, she's in preschool and her first week of preschool at three years old, she came home and we were having a tea party and she said, I can't drink this. It'll make me fat. And I was like, I'm three. At three years old already. Oh, <laughs> scary. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so I like just talked to her about it and what she thought that meant. And she had no clue. She was literally just repeating what somebody had told her at school. But that's how quickly it happens that they start copying what they're hearing and what they say and what they see at home. Um, and so being cautious about what I say and what I do in front of her is one thing, but also just like really. Like I always tell moms, the best way to do it is to sort your own shit out. <laughs> like we don't need to stand in the closet and hate our bodies, but then be confident when we're in front of our kids. Like just really working on your own body image. So that's just life. And that's just how you portray life. And you show your kids you can do the thing no matter what size you are. And yeah, so I think A, being the role model and sorting my own stuff out. So knowing I'm going to create this safe space and this place she can come home to in a world filled of diet culture um but also just like really learning a lot from her it's it's a neat little balance yeah kids are great teachers and I love how you pointed out like you can only teach your kids what you know yourself right so like doing the work of unpacking your own stories about food and body and what women are supposed to look like you have to do that first before you can um impart good values and like body neutrality onto your child. I know you've shared a few of the beauty standards, body ideals that were imparted upon you. One being like when when a woman walks up to a wall, her boobs oh. hit it first. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the other body stories you grew up believing? Um, It's interesting. Like when I first was talking about why I joined Weight Watchers that and I said it was a photo. It was my grandma was very, very diet culture. And of course she was. That's what she learned growing up. Um, and there was four granddaughters on that side of the family. And I was the biggest one out of them. Uh, and my body was constantly compared to them. Like when my grandma would give me hugs, she like pinched my back and say, oh, like you maybe should cut down on some sugar. Or like there was just comments about my food that was being made. Um but mainly that I was bigger than my cousins was the message I heard constantly growing up. And it was at my cousin's wedding. The four of us took a picture together. And when I saw the picture, I got the film developed. Let's just <laughs> old technology here. Um, I was like, oh, my gosh, my my grandma is right. Like, look how bigger, much bigger I am. And it was that photo that sent me to Weight Watchers. So constantly hearing that message from my grandma that I was too big that my body wasn't right I should have been a certain pant size like just constantly um and what did you internalize like what did that what did you make that mean about you that you were larger than your cousins yeah I it it was like I wasn't accepted Mm -hmm. like I wasn't I couldn't be part of this family until I lost weight uh, and you better believe when I lost weight, I called up all my cousins and was like, we're doing a photo shoot because I need to match you because I need to feel that acceptance. I, like you I need to feel like I'm part of this family. Oh. Um, yeah. And so that's really what it meant about me. And looking back, I can say that in the moment, probably didn't understand that, but it was seeking that approval from that loved one, fitting in, being part of that family. Yeah. And just feeling like, 
<laughs> I'm say confident, but we all know it's like false confidence, but I like, I fit in easier because I'm conformed to what other people expected of me. Yeah. I'm so glad you shared that story. And I know it's vulnerable, but I think so many women who are listening would be able to relate to that. I know that looking at pictures of ourselves can be a big trigger, especially if we are the largest one or one of the largest people in the photos and what we make that mean about us. And we really believe the story that our body size means we're less valuable, less worthy, less lovable. And then we put it on ourselves to fix the body mm -hmm. to gain that approval and to fit in. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you went from being that person to being the confident, badass woman that you are today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Stan. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a lot of mindset work and switching how you look at yourself. Uh, you mentioned body neutrality earlier, and that was what saved me, honestly, because there's so much messaging out there that's like, just stand naked in front of the mirror and tell yourself you're beautiful and like, I uh -huh. saw something on the internet the other day that was like, whisper what you want your body to look like into water and then drink it. And I was like, All what? Right, what is this? <laughs> like, just manifest yourself thin. Like, there's so God. much out there that we believe because these gurus are selling that if we just stand naked in front of the mirror enough times and tell ourselves we love ourselves, it's going to automatically click. And that doesn't that's not how it works and so when i heard about neutrality it was like holy shit i don't have to love my body what <laughs> so it really became like working on my mind and just really truly believing what my body is here to experience sure. uh the other flip side of it was i kept asking myself who profits off of me thinking this mm -hmm. way yes and that question was a very powerful question on my journey. Um, so it was who profits off of this? Who's creating this thought? Who is making money off of me hating myself? And I don't have to love my body to enjoy things. I don't have to love my body all the time. I can just do and be and exist. Yeah. Such a powerful question, right? Asking who profits off of this. And that brings me back to I wanted to ask more questions about Weight Watchers. I know you posted um, an Instagram post recently about how you worked for Weight Watchers for 10 years and you can count on one hand the number of women who reached their goal weight and like yeah. zero who actually maintained it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's how on earth do they keep people coming? Like Weight Watchers is the longest running diet, lifestyle, whatever people are calling it now, company, and people are still flocking to it. Yeah. It doesn't work. How like how are they doing it? Um, why that they're selling? <laughs> I drank the Kool Aid. I couldn't even <laughs> tell you. <laughs> uh, but there's actually a CFO retired CFO from Weight Watchers that's on record saying that it has an 84 percent fail rate, and that's what keeps their business going. Um, so you can find that on the internet. Google that saying in that stat and you'll find out but yeah a cfo from weight watchers actually said they have an 84 percent fail rate i would personally say it's higher uh but it's it's a you problem it's not a weight watchers problem like you just didn't try hard enough you didn't have enough willpower you didn't dedicate enough of your day um and we talk about unicorn people who can lose weight and keep it off and i was that person but the lifestyle to do that was wild. And it was my full-time job to stay yeah. thin. What um, did your life look like when you were, quote unquote, maintaining your weight? Yeah, peak, peak um, session on food. <laughs> um, yeah, so I worked out obsessively. I love spin and yoga, but it became such a compulsion in my life. I did... 5.30 spin class followed by a power flow class. Um, on my breaks at lunch, I usually go do another spin class. And I ran 5K probably three or four times a week. Wow. So I've had knee surgery. I have a busted ankle. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I ran this body into the ground. Literally. Uh, and Sundays were spent meal prepping because that's what wellness culture says. And Sundays meal prep day. Uh, and I'd spend hours like 
putting things into containers and making sure I had a plan. And if we were going out for lunch at work, I needed to know what had a time what was happening. And it it is all consuming. And it just like, yeah, lived in my head rent free all the time. But that was my existence, this being thin. Like my nickname was Slim. Like that oh, was my so whole cool. existence was just to be a thin person. Wow. And like that's so sad. I just go so back and pass Randy a hug. No kidding. For sure. So yeah. you lost you lost weight, but you lost a whole lot more. Like what else did you lose? Oh uh, I yeah, like I definitely would not be able to have a kid now and keep that lifestyle up. Um I I actually have a story I always tell about we were going out for going to a friend's house for a board game night. And I have such a strong memory of like we stepped into the elevator and as we were getting into the elevator, he texted me and said, plans have changed. We're just going to order pizza instead of go to a restaurant. And I collapsed to the elevator floor and cried, like Mm -hmm. bawled my eyes out because I was like, we have to go home. I don't have the points for the pizza. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my more extreme, like fall on the floor and cry. But stuff like this happened all the time. Like oh, I can't go to that barbecue unless I'm bringing my own food. And like my friends made fun of me because I always brought roasted chickpeas to events instead of chips. And I would just sit there with my little chickpeas, which like, don't get me wrong, I love roasted chickpeas. But that was my only thing I allowed myself to eat. And yeah, it just, it stole so much socializing and just so much time, like the time spending to get ready and like, your clothing and to be perfect like it, it just was a whole image to cr- keep up with yeah it really like when you say it was a full-time job it's it was more than that like it was your whole life your whole existence yeah 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 and when you talk to my partner now he's like oh my gosh I'm so happy you don't do anything that now like we are actually present in our lives and we get to do stuff together so was there a grieving process when you quit or or was it like just instantly liberating? I'm laughing when you say grieving process because I legitimately had a funeral for some of my ship. <laughs> so yes, grief is part of the process. <laughs> um, and I I think like grieving the body I had, I think we forget that part and we were a different person. So yeah, there was a whole grief process. Um, I legitimately like made I lived through humor as my coping mechanism. So I had a funeral for some of my clothes with a friend. <laughs> but there is there's a grieving process for the person you used to be. There's a grieving process for the body you used to have, for the clothes you used to wear. Like you change as a whole person. And yeah, like I change. I feel like I'm a phoenix that has risen from the ashes of diet culture, but that was still a whole like a huge part of my life. Yeah. I So tell us what you've gained now that you've quit. Like, let's inspire our listeners because I'm sure there are lots who are listening who are like, oh my God, I would love to be able to quit. Yeah. But they don't see what's possible on the other side. Like, it just yeah. seems so scary. So share what your life looks like now. Yeah. Um, confidence. Like, I can't stress enough, like, confidence and self-trust is such a huge piece. And, and, I know I can guarantee somebody out there listening is like confidence, but I don't want to be a Victoria's Secret model or I don't want to run naked through the forest. Like <laughs> we're sold this giant confidence is impossible to reach status, but like it's such little things in life. Like one of my clients, her big thing was she wanted to go to a book club. She had a different accent than everybody. There was food and she was going to be in the biggest body. So her coaching was to be able to go to a book club and enjoy it and be present um but it's not my life like you asked <laughs> but that's okay like, Good example my i i lived in pants whether it was 30 degrees out like i was always in pants and so to be able to wear shorts like so it's something so simple but wearing shorts without the noise of who's looking at me who's thinking this who's judging me for this like just being like my body deserves comfort so I'm gonna wear shorts um and wearing color that was not Mm -hmm. part of who I was and I am I'm a colorful person I love everything neon and bright but my clothes were all black 
So it's stuff like that, or like I wanted to try stand up paddle boarding. So I tried that. I am joining a kickboxing class in September. Um, eating. I didn't realize how much joy I get out of eating and food and socializing over dinners. And it's just like, it's so great to get that back to death. <laughs> yeah. 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 And to be able to order whatever you want off the menu and like, get dressed and leave your house in 20 minutes instead of primping and fussing oh <laughs> all yes. day long, right? And like the getting ready to leave your house in 20 minutes, but also not coming home to the hurricane of clothing that has been thrown around my bedroom <laughs> while trying to get ready. That's the best. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, I walk into my closet and I'm like, yeah, what, what do I get to wear? What do I want to wear? Like my closet is fun. Like, feels good it's not this place of oppression anymore yeah because you're neutral about your body and you filled your closet with things that you love and you feel good in or comfortable on your body so you know whenever you pull something it's gonna feel good on you and you're not gonna have to like pull this off and oh my god that doesn't you're not holding on to clothes that are too small hoping one day you'll be able to wear them yeah and if you're listening right now underwear buy oh buy underwear that fits oh my god (laughs) There's nothing worse than tight underwear. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it from both of us. It's true. Get underwear that fits. <laughs> yeah. This is really inspiring. And I hope that the people who are listening go or feel feel that nudge to do this for themselves. Right? It is a process. I know you went through a process and you now take clients through a process. So tell us a little bit about what that looks like. What is the journey from like being obsessed over your weight and fearing weight gain to being a confident badass how do you take people on that journey yeah um and I love I love the one-on-one coaching aspect of things because you can get so specific Mm -hmm. on what your personal goals are right it's not a I also do group coaching as well but it's we can get to know what your goals are so when I first meet with someone that's what it's about it's like what would you do if your body didn't matter, what would it be? What does your life look like? And we get so clear on that vision. And that's what we're going to work towards. Uh, and feeling that way and believing that you can create that life. And so my my process is to get really curious. Curious about where you learned your thoughts. Curious about why you feel certain things. And learn to take the judgment and the shoulds out. Yeah, those voices are still going to be there. And like when we have those, like I looked at my body the other day and was like, well, I don't really like how I look today. But it was like, oh, hello, mean girl voice. What are you doing here today? Why are you here? Instead of just being like, oh, God, stop. I don't want to think this way. So that curiosity point. Um, And then really learning to connect your mind and your body. And we forget how to do that. Diet culture teaches us we shouldn't be doing that. Being a women, woman in a patriarchal society teaches us we shouldn't do that. Like, so we're going to learn how to connect that so you can get the answers for yourself. Instead of looking on Pinterest or searching for the next guru, you're the person that knows the answers. So after we get curious, then we're going to connect. And then we get to create. And that's my favorite part. So creating new beliefs, creating new thoughts, and creating safe action that is going to get you towards that goal. Mm -hmm. I love that. And a whole lot of self-compassion along the way, right? Because it's it's not linear and that mean girl voice is going to show up. Oh, yeah. I think that's the biggest takeaway, right? Is I I think the biggest trap I see people falling into is they just believe that mean girl voice. Like they think because they have these thoughts that they're true and they have to act on them and therefore got to change the body. Yeah. Like you say, it's becoming curious and compassionate and and knowing you don't you don't have to believe that thought just because it's in your head, right? Yeah. And when I have those thoughts now, it's like, oh hi, grandma. <laughs> I know where I learned to think this way. <laughs> right. So yeah. yeah, and I'm a professional. I coach women on doing this, and I'm not perfect. Like I have yeah. bad body image days. But the difference now is those body image days don't spiral out of control. I don't turn to the pantry to binge for three or four days. Um, I don't like, I cope with supportive ways. And sometimes that's food, but it's not, it's not the shame spiral that exists in my life and feels heavy for weeks on end. It's like, oh, I had a bad body image day. Tomorrow's a new day. 
I don't need to listen to those voices. Yeah, I'm allowed to have feelings and be in that space, but tomorrow's a new day. Like we're going to have a better day. Yeah. If you could sum up your learning into to one inspiring statement, what would you want our listeners to walk away from this with? What's one little nugget that you want to impart on our listeners today? Um, my favorite quote is to stop waiting and like we can be funny and spell waiting like wait stop waiting and start living like let's step off that scale and let's let's start living your your magical life i just gave you like four sentences that's stop, okay that's okay it's, it's a short paragraph we'll go with yeah <laughs> and i think you have a free resource for our listeners to um a quiz are you putting your life on hold for the scale am i right yeah, so on my Instagram, yeah, no, Randy Cox Coaching, I've got two freebies. One is a quiz that you can take. It's fun. There's gifs. There's jokes. Um, but it really just, like, lets you see if you're actually putting your life on hold for the scale. Um, and my other freebie that I just released is a closet clean-out guide. So you oh, cool. can learn how to clean out your closet and not just, like, Marie Tendo, let's bring a joy, but, like, actually hold space for the feelings that come up. And there's questions mm -hmm. and space. and grieving process on it all and then a shopping guide to help fill your closet with confidence oh that's so cool that would be so helpful so can you recap for us again where our listeners can find you both your social media and i know you have a podcast as well so give them all yeah. the links yeah so i mainly hang out on instagram randy cox coaching and just come hang out say hi it's a fun little party over there uh, and yeah, I have a podcast. It's called Thick Thighs and Confident Vibes. And you can catch Kim on my podcast too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for being here today, Randy, and sharing your story and your message of body acceptance and helping our listeners see what's possible on the other side of quitting dieting. It's It's been a great conversation. I'm so thankful you took the time. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. So fun. Thanks for tuning into the Power in Motion podcast today. If you love what you're learning here, then I invite you to take the next step of embodying these concepts into your own life so that you can live your healthiest, happiest life and never again feel held back by your body. Coaching is the fastest, most efficient pathway to taking what you know in your head to actually applying it and seeing results. Whether you're looking to make changes around movement, food, body image, or all three, I'm here to help you nurture a kind, respectful and trusting relationship with your body so you can feel your very best. Click the link in the show notes to book a free consultation and together we'll uncover what's getting in the way of you having the results you want. You'll leave this call knowing exactly what you need to work on and together we'll explore whether one of my coaching offers is a good fit for you. I can't wait to meet you.